She's had quite an impressive career as an Emmy, OB, Bistro award-winning actress and comedian and singer. She has been in the Broadway shows Conversations with My Father, Grease, Welcome to the Club. She may have, you may have seen her on the films The Producer with Matthew Broderick, The Men on the Moon with Jim Carrey, Foul Play with Goldie Hawn and Chevy Chase, Basketball Diaries with Leonardo DiCaprio, and many more. You may have also seen her on television in the shows Sex in the City, Law and Order, Sesame Street, All My Children. She is currently starting in the off-Broadway production of the Love Divided by Times Three. She is Lehman College acting professor Marilyn Soko, and she's here with us today. It's a pleasure having you on the program, ma'am. It's ma wonderful to be with you, Miguel. Thank you for being here. It's really oh, nice. Uh, I I want to talk to you about this wonderful career that you've had, oh. and uh, and and basically to illustrate what it is to be an actress in New York mm. and who and someone who's done it all. Yeah. Uh, and, and I want to start by talking a little bit about how it is that you became an actress. What was it that told you this is what I need to do with the rest of my life? And when did that happen? It started, they tell me, in the carriage. Um, my mother <laughs> used to tie the carriage, excuse me, <clears throat> to the, well, the outside, the facade of the building in the Bronx, 172nd and Walton Avenue, okay. not too far away from Lehman. And um, apparently what I did was I would untie my shoes and sort of make sounds to make people come over and tie them. And then when they moved on, I'd untie them and then I would have an improvisation. So you were acting since you were a little baby? Yes. And then when I could stand and walk a little, I would sing and dance in the street in the Bronx. And then when we moved to Mount Rainier, Maryland, I was the only one. I would do one-person shows amongst all these people what, who what, thought I was nuts. But, what was it? What was it that impelled me? Yeah. What was, well, it, was there someone? Was there a movie that you saw? Was there a play that you saw? Was there an actress that impressed you? Is there a relative who's in show business? No. It, it really is an impulse, I think, or a need, or a, oh, I don't know. It's spiritual, actually, I think, for me. Certainly, there were people that inspired me. My mother was very theatrical. My father, very, well, both of them very musical. My father was funny as a punster. My mother was just very, you know, she'd come in with hair rollers under her arms, you know. Oh boy. <laughs> and she'd go, when my sister and I were still in bed in the morning, she'd go, oh, I'm an Italian movie star. My set isn't done yet. <laughs> and then she would take the rollers and put them on the side of her, sides of her head, and she'd walk like Frankenstein, you know. She was, uh, she would do sight gag, very beautiful woman. Very. Um, to me, she was funnier than Lucy, than Lucy wow. Ball. So she would be making something, you know, cooking something at the stove, like a tongue, you know, and then she'd turn <laughs> around and the tip of the tongue would be coming out of her mouth where she'd be cutting up an orange and then she'd go like this and then she would have it like teeth. Mm -hmm. Very funny. She was just fun, but also very dramatic, you know. Oh, when, when Marilyn Monroe died, she said, she was brave. She, she, people thought she took her life. She was the brave one. She committed suicide, you know, I mean. <laughs> so I can see that you got a lot of this from your mom then. Yeah, hmm. I did, yes. Yes. So then, professionally, when did you begin, when did you, when did you first appear on stage? Well, I was acting all through uh, junior high and high school because um, uh, my parents sent send me to uh, the high school drama lab at Catholic U when I, we were living in Washington, D.C., and it was great. I was shy, but I had a crush on my acting teacher now. That made a, a difference? Yeah, oh yes, a guy who's now deceased, Chuck Guinness, I loved him. But then after him came a guy who said to me, work on your body, 
work on your voice, work on your everything. So I didn't act for three years. But in college <laughs> at NYU Uptown, which is now the Bronx Community College, I got the lead in HMS Pinafore. And that was just it for me. It opened and all kinds of doors after that. Doors in my heart, you know. Even though I majored in Spanish literature, I um, I just then I really hurried up and made uh, theater my second major. I had relegated it, you know. It wasn't, uh, you know, to the back burner because my father said it wasn't practical. But I saw I was very successful as Josephine in HMS Pinafore. Refrain, audacious ta, whatever. Okay, so, um, but then when I graduated, well, and I also did Sharon McGlonergan in Finian's Rainbow, when my name, because I was married my senior year, God help me, <laughs> my name was Marilyn Teitelbaum playing Sharon McGlonergan. Wow. I got divorced because I couldn't stand the name. So anyway, <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I couldn't. So I, um, I uh, honored in Spanish, and all my senior year I spent on Cervantes and Don Quixote. So I was auditioning, taking singing lessons after I graduated. And I happened to audition in the spring of 1966 for Man of La Mancha. My favorite musical please, of all time. Please, And so I, um, I got it. I got it. I, the guy who was directing it, Albie Marr, who's now married to a friend of mine, um, he wanted me to... This is on Broadway. Yeah, well, I auditioned off -Broadway. when it was off-Broadway, but a big hit when it was at the Anta Theater across from, I, I guess the bottom line is still there on 4th Street, East 4th. And, um, and so he, he gave me a direction, the director did. And I give this as a piece of advice if you have the will as a person auditioning, especially as a neophyte, when you probably have more guts than you do later on because mm -hmm. you know less, okay? I, the, the audience at Anta was on a steep rake. And so from the heavens, I heard him say, could you be more petulant? Now, I knew what petulant meant, but I had like this glitch. The synapses wouldn't come together, and I said, you know, I can't understand you if I can't see you. Now, this guy, he's in the, he's in the he's, dark. He's there for a reason. He's a shy guy, and I sensed that, but he came down. And I thought that maybe I could get a sense of what petulant meant if I saw his face. I didn't. <laughs> so as a result, I understudied the niece, who was petulant. But I kept the part of the belly dancer, which got the biggest laugh in the show and a big side gag. And um, I'm, I met a lot of guys across the and country. And so you were the belly dancer on Men of La Mancha. The gypsy dancer. And I dated a lot across the country. Gypsy we had dance. the first national tour with Jose Ferrer. Playing the lead. Yes. And then Richard Kiley, who had done it originally, took over in L.A. and San Francisco. So, I mean, you know, it was you, just so you, great.